Hey guys, VBAT here with another V Place, taking a look at the 1099B2 yet again, but this time with the 50mm cannon. Yes, by popular demand, I decided to buy back this cannon and equip it on this airframe and show you guys what it was like to fly with this cannon. It is definitely going to change the dynamics. It is a very strong and powerful gun. It does exactly what you would hope it would do. It allows the Germans to get a much more powerful air-to-ground capability solely from the main gun. However, you are going to sacrifice a lot of your air-to-air -air capability, and if you've been flying the German ground attackers for any period of time, you're used to lifting that nose up and taking out one of those pesky Russian ground attackers or even another German ground attacker that's in your area. I have even done so with this airframe to lift up the nose and go after a Spitfire from time to time. But with a 50mm cannon, you lose a bit of that capability because you can just see how slow this shell travels through the air. But when it hits, it really does cause some serious damage. And you can see here, if I was going just a little bit slower and concentrated my fire, I pro probably would have been able to take that sight with just the main gun alone because I would have been able to destroy those hardened structures, which is what this cannon excels at doing. Additionally, it can fire out to 4,500 feet and a little bit further, so you really can range out those shots, start causing the damage early, taking out some of those low altitude AA guns that typically chew up your relatively thin skinned ground attacker. I mean, comparing it to the IL-40, this thing, it doesn't have nearly the same amount of hit points, but it is nice to be able to take out some of those AA sites. That way you can endure a little bit longer. I do love the fact that the 1099B2 gets jet engines. It allows you to be able to stay up at much higher speeds. Sure, the 329 can get close to 400 miles an hour once you've fully burned out the boost, but with these jet engines, it allowed me to be able to climb over that, mount, over that mountain back there and come in and sneak up on the enemy. The gun fires fairly rapidly, in fact it has the same rate of fire as the 30mm Mark 103 cannons. And really I'd see this cannon upgrade as being more of a parallel to the Mark 103s, because in a lot of ways you could almost use them interchangeably. We only need a little bit more to capture this site. Right now, killing an aircraft would be perfect, however, I do have quite a few vectoring in at my position, one of which is a Yak-15. This is ill-advised for any light turn fighter to kind of vector in on the tail of a nearly full health ground attacker, but if he wants to allow me to be able to capture the zone through retreating away his health here, I'm more than happy to take advantage of that situation. Now that we've eliminated that aircraft and finished capturing that zone, we're going to head over to the middle and try and recapture that site. You can see our team's making some pretty good headway. My goal was to try and get behind the enemy lines a little bit here and capture a zone that they didn't have, or that they had already captured and weren't paying attention to. Uh, you can see that I'm actually able to pitch up the nose in this view because I've reconfigured Q for being pitch up, which allows me to be able to keep myself from hitting some of the terrain features on the map. We're going after the thinner skin targets right now. We nearly had it, but it looked like one of our allies just died here. But we do have our bombs back, so if I want to double over, I could probably drop on one of the more heavily armored sites and capture that, but we were able to kill an enemy aircraft. I'm now going to hammer down on the boost and head over to this other garrison and try and capture that. You'll see here I'm going to try and shoot at this Tempest, but just so hard to make contact with these cannon shells. And, you know, I'm still trying to find the sweet spot with these, but the only time I've ever really been able to shoot down an aircraft is either when they were head on or if it was another ground attacker that was moving very slow and I was actually right behind them within about a thousand to five hundred feet. Much more effective to use the tail gunner in this instance. 
again, able to range out to some pretty far ranges. Now, the 4,500 is going to be the effective firing range. It'll give you the best bang for your buck. It'll cause the most damage. However, you can start hitting the target further out than that. Using these bombs here to try and capture the zone, but it wasn't even needed because our allies were able to kill enough aircraft as well. Uh, here I decide that I'm going to let the boost regen a little bit. You can see how quickly it's regening because the engine cooler will actually allow you to increase at a faster rate. And since that rate is going to be dictated based on your overall boost pool, letting that thing go for the full 10 seconds ended up bringing back quite a bit of boost for us and allows us to be able to get up to a much better speed in order for us to try and come in here and grab this other garrison. You'll see that I'm kind of sneaking behind the enemy lines a little bit here, so that way they have to come back towards their spawn instead of staying near ours. So it's kind of putting them in a position where they gotta keep coming back to where they started and puts them behind just a little bit. I am working with a bot GA here as well as a bot multi-role, but you'll see that we're pretty effective at being able to come in here and capture this zone relatively quickly as a team. We just take grade 2 ground attacker, we've contributed to capturing four sites already, and now we're coming in to help capture this fifth site. Drop a bomb in the middle here, should be enough to be able to capture the zone. And now we're going to go ahead and boost through this area. Now I try to fire at this F2G up here, but again, just no such luck on getting that shell to make contact. Nope. We can, however, go ahead and throw the tail gunner on him, put a little bit more damage on our way out. We are about to hit Squall Line. I see a lot of people run into the dirt and just kill their aircraft at this point and i can't really fault people because it is a viable tactic it's a game mechanic that people are they're exploiting but it is a game mechanic that is here so uh, i'm not really gonna give anybody a hard time about that but I, i'm not gonna do that so as a result you see me here with pretty low hit points i'm in the red uh, but I'm going to go ahead and just try and barrel towards the enemy's last remaining garrison. And I see that there's an aircraft off to my left. I believe that's the 1092. And I don't want to mess with the 1092. It's a very dangerous aircraft. So I'm kind of running the, uh, the trench run over here and staying inside of these canyons to try and obscure the enemy's ability to spot me. But I guess this bot XP-72 isn't going to let me go anytime soon. So I'm probably going to die to this aircraft. But knowing that we're so close to finishing the battle and getting a victory out of this and that I already have grade one on the aircraft i'm gonna go ahead and just go for broke and try and capture this zone especially since we're already in the circle at this point so let's go ahead and use these four bombs and try and get some points you pretty much see the writing at the wall at this point gotta look out for those towers though i'm gonna drop two here for good measure and two here for good measure but there's a lot of aircraft factoring in our position. Winged Legend. Didn't quite get it there. Oh, here he comes. That F2G knocked us out. So we're out of the battle at this point, but I'm okay with that. You can see that we have taken out a lot of enemy aircraft that aren't going to be coming back. And we have four of the zones, so it's pretty much over at this point. And I think that we showed a pretty good case for loading up the 50 millimeter cannon if somebody wanted to do that. I don't think that it's a bad option. I think it's really just a flavor of the player. Which one do you want? Do you want to do the 50s and maximize your effectiveness against ground targets? Or do you want to load up the 30s, have something that's a little bit more consistent with what you've been experiencing throughout the entire German ground attacker line, giving you the versatility to take Bring on enemy today. aircraft? Or we'll do you just want the blurb gun? All right, we were able to rack up a pretty decent score there. We got the Lang Medal as well as the Winged Legend, and we also got Hero of the Sky Badge for getting 
grade one in this airframe and we did quite a bit of damage to a lot of ground targets and really made our way around the battlefield which again highlights the strength of having a jet propelled ground attacker which really allows you to be able to manipulate the battlefield. We saw on more than one occasion however that that 50 millimeter cannon while very powerful is seldom able to land a shot on a target. It just has a very low shell velocity and you're only firing a single shot and a low rate of fire, relatively speaking, to maybe the 30 millimeter uh, cannons that you saw in the 329. Now this, however, is going to actually sport the same rate of fire as the 30 millimeter Mark 103s. However, you're launching four of them at a time and you're able to make contact more often because these shells are going to be traveling at a higher velocity. So again, I think that the 30 millimeter Mark 103s are more versatile, but with a 50 millimeter cannon, you have a much higher capability against ground targets. And you can see that here with the armament being ranked at 104 on our scale here out of what is supposed to be, I thought, 100 scales. So now you're at 104 or so very few things can touch the overall damage output of this main cannon however you got to make it land the shot and if you're going to use that against an aerial target some people are really good with it but the average person is probably going to it's probably going to take you a while to make this work in that way uh, but it doesn't mean it's impossible but the 30 millimeter mark 103s are going to be way more consistent a lot easier to land those shots and you'll have more than enough firepower to be able to take out another ground attacker. Again, I say that if all things are considered equal and we are mounting the 30 millimeter Mark 103s, we essentially get a little bit more range, a little bit more damage output. We get a little bit better on the tail gunners. We get a lot better on the engines in my, uh, my estimation, but those two extra bombs is really what's gonna set you apart from its predecessor in the 329. But I think that it would be nice if we had the latitude to put the 50 millimeter on. Uh, the way that it's built right now, if you want to specialize this platform, you have to have it equipped with all the top items. We don't have an option of putting on the 50 millimeter cannons, or the 50 millimeter cannon and maintaining specialist. And I know some of you are like, well, you know, I could deal with not having the extra three spots here, but now you can't even put on the advanced or the ultimate gear either. So you're limited on what you can do with this platform if you were the type of person who really liked the 50 and you wanted to keep this plane around. I feel as though you should have that. You've already earned it. You've unlocked all the modules at this point. You've earned specialists. Why can't we configure the aircraft the way we want to? It's a little bit disappointing. Hopefully it's something that they change in the future, but it's the same thing that happens with the 262 HG or the HD2. The HD2 has these really nice 20 millimeter cannons, the same 20 millimeter cannons that you would find on the 1092 and the 1102, just on a faster platform, less maneuverable albeit, but it has a further reach than what you see with the 30 millimeter cannons that you get as the top weapons. Damage output isn't the same, but it doesn't much matter because with a higher rate of fire, a high shell velocity, and a longer range, you're going to be landing more consistent hits. And that becomes the very important aspect here is, while you might be able to hit with a stronger punch, like with a 50 millimeter cannon on the 1099 B2, is it going to be versatile enough or effective enough in its normal use? Another thing to contend with here is if you think about the idea of what a ground attacker really is, putting on the 30 millimeter cannons and getting four of those shots to hit in fairly rapid succession, you're increasing your chance for starting a building on fire while the 50 millimeter cannon is still only hitting with a single shell. So you have lowered your chance of being able to start a structure on fire, especially since the larger the caliber a gun is, typically the higher the crit chance is at the sacrifice of fire chance. And if you've done GAs long enough, you'll know that lighting a building on fire guarantees that that structure is going to die out of that small capture zone. So, Fires are very valuable for us as ground attacker players. And you lose a lot of that with that 50 millimeter. But again, it is a very unique setup. 
and it can be a lot of fun and rewarding for quite a few players. I've heard it go either side of the fence. Some people like the 50, some people like the 30 millimeter setup. I'm just opting for the 30 millimeter setup because I plan on going to the 1102 Bravo and not keeping this airframe, which is going to have a version of 30 millimeter cannon. So I just wanted to be consistent with what I was going to be getting next so I didn't learn any weird habits. All that said, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry I didn't put the narwhal in for the other video I did for the 1099B2, but you guys are right. I should have put in a little bit about the 50 millimeter cannon since I did talk about it in my comments section. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will be catching you on the next one.